Welcome back to the Afro Anime Initiative podcast. Here in the Afro Anime Initiative, we discuss everything in Afrofuturism from A to Z, and I guarantee you, we even made up some letters. Um, but before we begin, if you could please follow us on our social medias and hit us up at Afro Anime Initiative on Facebook and Instagram, and at Afro underscore AI on Twitter and right here on YouTube. And while you're here on YouTube, please do those YouTube things by liking, commenting, subscribe. And hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode of the initiative. Well, I am your co-host, Karen Bradley, and along with me today is my co-host, Paulina. Paulina, how you been today? I'm doing all right. Thank you, Darren. And I hope everybody else is doing okay and staying safe and enjoying this awesome weather. Facts, facts. And along with us on our fantastic ride is my second co-host, Marvette. Marvette, how you feeling? What up, y'all? I'm decent. How's everybody doing? I hope y'all staying safe. The mask are up and on. So, for sure. Oh, man. So let's jump right into it. With You know, we like to do stuff around here a little bit differently. We like to throw shine. Not shade. We like to throw shine. And what we like to throw shine on today is the Fox Chronicles and animated sci-fi Kickstarter pro- um, program. Marvette, tell us a little more about the Fox Chronicles. The Fox Chronicles, number one, a sci-fi action adventure, is a coming-of-age futurist adventure full of action, suspense, and truth. It follows the story of Autumn, an Atlanta teen. She tries to balance um, overly protective parents, friends, and the overly need to protect those around her. So, uh, it's created by Tony Code. Tony Cade, I'm sorry. He is a founder of Atlanta Sci-Fi. Of Fantasy and Expo, and he is also the creator and editor of this. We have the writer is written by Robert Jeffrey II, co writer by Leah Patrice Wave. Basically, it's a black story. Let me correct myself a diverse story, but featuring black creators, black artists, black writers, and most importantly, it's a story of a need of a black female teenager that a lot of us need to relate to. And a lot of the cover art and animation is done by Levetta O'Neill. Um, it's a great project. It's wonderful to support. What do you think, Polly? It's, it reminds me of um, another comic book. We, we just talked about it, like, what, last week, two weeks ago? It was, like, Project Wildfire. Like, it... it Mm-hmm. It it, mm-hmm. it kind of reminds me of that, and I I like that because I was I'm excited for Project Wildfire, and I'm now I'm excited for this too. I'm gonna do my best to lend my support, uh, financially if I can. If not, just what, spread the word on it. Um, the, what was it? The art you excited? The art and the story, basically, and yeah, yeah, it's just more more black people, like more black teenagers, especially but, black girls, which is. We need more of that, mm-hmm. and I love that. Definitely. And I, I would love to see. I would have loved to see more of that as a kid. Even though there, there, there has been a lot of quite a bit of content as a kid, like centering black mm-hmm. teenagers. But right now, you don't see a lot of that, and it's odd. But I know why. Anywho, I'm excited for this. This is a great project. <laughs> this is, this is, this is. Yeah, this is a great project, and it's. I'm trying to trying to reconnect with what I used to love as a kid in terms of comics and this content right here is couldn't, you know, it couldn't have come up at a better time. So I hope it, I hope it, you know, takes off. I hope they succeed. I hope they do really well and they just keep going with the storylines and the really, really cool sounding characters. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. think I'm um, really down for this because of Tony Kate. Like I do name been in the circles for even before it was Afrofuturism, his name has been in the circles. He's been doing this stuff in the community for our people with the on the sci-fi side, on the writing side. Just I heard his name, I'm like, oh, okay, I gotta find some money. I mean, that's about it. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. And like it's like um P said, it does have a bit of that feel for Project Wildfire. And again, it's it's our people doing for self. It's another self-publishing thing, going to the people, say, Hey, people, this for y'all, help us out, we give it back. I'm I'm loving it. Um, so throwing some shine on the Fox Chronicles, and you know what? And a little extra more on Project Wildfire. Go support both. 
um, listen to our last podcast for more information on Project Wildfire and the Kickstarter for the Fox Chronicles will be placed in the description below this video. Man, you know what? Let's just keep it rolling with, with beautiful news. Um, this past week, Variety reports that Issa Rae of, man, YouTube fame, Awkward Black Girl. I mean, I used to love that show. Um, and, of course, her other shows. I'm sorry, but, hey, I know Awkward Black Girl. Um, has signed a eight-project deal with Warner Media, which allows for her to, or so I say allows for them to get first look deals on any of her projects for both television and movies for HBO, HBO Max, and Warner Brothers Films. P, tell us a little bit more about this Issa Rae deal. So it's basically a deepening, deepening her relationship with HBO. Um, apparently HBO really sees her value because in, Insecure has brought in a lot, yes. a lot. Like I haven't seen it, mm-hmm. but I know it's a good show. Like I just, it's, what it's yes. on its fifth season it's fifth and final season i think yes it, yeah so you know she's a smart woman she knows exactly what she's looking for in terms of her writing and yes awkward starting from awkward black girl and look at where she is now so yes she's sticking with hbo she is deepening her relationship with hbo and she it's actually an eight figure film and television deal and over the next mm-hmm. five Thank years you, Brian. No, it's, you're good. You are good. And so before Ray would, you know, she signed like a two year overall deal with HBO ahead of like Insecure, renewing it in 2018 for three years. Now it's a five year deal and it's valued at mm-hmm. about $40 million of projects, which is mm-hmm. mind blowing. Nice. It's like, I think they, I think they mentioned like, it's pretty much up there with like uh, Donald Glover's um, deal with Amazon. So, yeah, I mean, the exact value is like not given out yet, but it's 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 around. I would would say like up to like forty million dollars, and I'm just like, holy crap, that's big, that's huge. And the thing, and the, the smart thing that make H- your money, girl, exactly. Like, get your coin. And the really cool thing about it is that HBO is also really aware that comedy is the big thing that people go for on you know on the service and Issa Rae is amazing with comedy so there you go you know they knew that Insecure brought in big numbers and they're sticking with their commitment with her because she's just she's just bringing in a lot so honestly yes this is this is super cool I'm really looking forward to seeing more from her hopefully I can get I'll get my my myself together and subscribe to HBO Max because I can't miss out I really can't so, uh, Marette, how do you what what do you think? How do you feel about this? Thinking back on everything you said, Issa is valuable. She has great ideas. She has fresh ideas. There's a target of audience that she targets, and she knows how to get to them. And because of Insecure, so many people signed on HBO Max just mm-hmm. to watch that show. So I don't know. With every season, there is a new subscription rate. So yes, Issa brings in money. So forty million is great if that is the number. Even if it's higher, it's wonderful because they know whatever she's gonna bring to the table is definitely gonna make more money than what they gave her. Mm-hmm. So it's a smart move on both of their end. And I enjoyed something she said: when people believe in you and um build with you, I tend to want to further that relationship. That's what she said about signing with HBO, which I I mean with more in the media, basically them too. But you know, I enjoyed that. Because, again, mm. building that relationship, you could further some more things. Because, you know, looking out to the future, she's doing great. Mm. I hope she stays you know, on that road and thrives more and more and more. Mm. Um, yeah, I find it, this is fantastic. It goes back to a discussion that we did have on the last podcast when we talked about Domnisha, um, the independent publisher who made her deal with Netflix. And yeah. one of the things she talked about was know your worth. Mm-hmm. know your worth and Issa Rae has proven time and time again she knows her worth when she started from awkward black girl on on YouTube she did that herself with her friends grabbed the camera spent their own money took breaks from work when they want you know in between they what they real life jobs you know asked for favors to film in people buildings to get it done and she proved herself 
on the writing side, directing side, producing side, to turn her network where on YouTube that they showcase other black writers and performers and producers, then to turn that around to get insecure, to show her acting skills. It's just like HBO were the first people to believe in her. Mm-hmm. They were like, yo, we we see what you're doing. We like it. And for her to be like, hey, y'all believed in me. I ain't finna just dish you and just move on to the next person. I'm gonna come to y'all first. This is what I want. Can you give it to me? This the thing. They like, uh, yeah. And that's what you gotta do. That's what you have to do. And much love to her from the way she started, how she came up, and just again understanding her value and being, man, just honest about it. You know? Cause she does a lot of work when she talks to other people. Like she men- tries to mentor people. She ain't have to do none of that stuff because she started from the bottom. And she takes her time out to do that stuff. And it's just another example of when you believe in yourself, when you work for yourself, and you trust in yourself the things you can accomplish. So shout out to Issa Rae. Man, congratulations. I look forward to new stuff. I just do. I've always had. Ever since Aqua Black Girl, like I said, I just look forward to it. Um, well, I hate to say it this way, but happy good times. Part of the podcast is over, and well, the <laughs> beginning of the DT rants is, is coming up. But first, let's let's discuss Nadria Tucker and the interview she did discussing her experience writing and being fired from CW shows. Well, it looks like for no reason. This happened back in, I believe, November, but it's coming up now because, well, CW is launching new shows mm. and canceling old ones. Mm. Um. So, Marvette, give us a little bit of detail of Nadia Tucker and her experiences with the CW. Yay, CW. (laughs) (laughs) Man, oh man, oh man. Mm. Brace yourselves. Nadia Tucker, she's a writer on um, Superman and Louise for CW shows. She was a writer on the first 13 episodes, supposedly. She did an interview that she was saying her contract was ended without any, you know, didn't give her a hint that it ended. So it says some personal news. Wednesday, I got word that my contract on Superman and Lou won't be extended. My service is no longer needed. My online and draft superb. Obviously, I disagree with that last bit. Tucker <laughs> tweeted. I, would, I see why you, you know. But we'll get to that. <laughs> this after months of me flagging hashtag me to jokes in dialogue of me defending Bissell test of me fighting to ensure the only black faces on screen aren't villains of mm. me pitching stories for female characters in the title mm. of this series that went ignored. If I sounded if I sound bitter, it's because one's things. Well, it's not you know, surprising. And then she went on and said how the you know the studios to pack their room with, you know, black writers, diverse writers, but not up to the experience. They're just for genetics, you know, excelled enough for them to be up front, for them to be up to the level. They're the, on the lowest level of writers. They're not the upper level writers. You know, right. No experience needed at all. So I'm basically, yeah, they're basically putting the status quo. So this basically got fired for stating her opinion. For, you know, I don't want to say being the bitter black woman. Because that's what they made her sound like in their part of the interview where they were backing up like, oh, no, we didn't fire her because of that. And then she went on and said how she didn't get her money. And they were like, no, she was only paid for the 13 episodes where she worked on. And the 14 and 15 episode, her um, contract ended. And she said she didn't get paid for eight of those episodes. So my thing is this to you guys. With us having black writers, what's the point if they can't state their opinion, if they can't come up with an idea or something that's... As a writer, it's your right to share your thoughts. It's your right to be free. 
that's what the idea of writing is. So for you to bring mm -hmm. that up, to ex express yourself, to express your thoughts, to express your word, it's being used against you. And then every time you say something or you want to bring in race and like, oh, no, we have a room full of black writers. We have black directors. We have black artists. We have black this, black that, black this, black that. But they're not in a forefront. So if she's stating her opinion, her words again, he's being backlash for it. And still hasn't gotten paid. Um. Yeah, and like, well, like I said, this happened in November, and this is now the end of March, beginning of April. And um, P, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Mark. No, I'm saying like, no matter. She literally said, no matter how many black, Asian, disabled, or gay writers you have, if you don't listen to them, it's pointless. I yeah. felt her because that's basically everything in this industry. P, what do you think? First of all, first and foremost, this is absolutely the least surprising thing CW has ever done, period. Because, of course they did. It is very obvious from, not even The Flash, before that, many of their shows were only, you know, they only hired black a actors, writers, you, whatever, to fill the status quo. You see how black characters are treated like garbage in their shows. So, think about what's in the writer's room. Who's writing this material? Now you know. Now you see what's going on. So this is not surprising. Not at least, not not one bit. That's one. Number two, um, Ray Fisher caught wind of this. And he's supporting her 100%, despite how he handled, mm -hmm. you know, his own issues with Walter Hamada and Joss mm -hmm. Whedon. Now, and honestly... Okay, yes, we got we got to uplift each other, especially when it comes to stuff like this. So cool. That's great. But the fact that this is happening in the first place is just again another reminder how we need to build our own. Third, it's she mentioned um the the chief creative officer, Jeff Johns, <laughs> he's reading about what he did. Is he's such a piece of work. If I like personally if I see him face to face, I'm going to punch him in the face. He's, he's one of those people who will speak over everybody else. Like, there was literally dialogue she mentioned about, you know, how she was told, like, it makes no sense for this character to be changing their hair all the time. And she literally pointed out part of the Black experience is how Black women change their hair a lot. That's what we do. And he goes, no, that's not. Exactly. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's not the Black experience. A white man literally told her that is not the Black experience. So, a white man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm like... When I, when I read this article, when I heard about this, I was not surprised, but I was still mad. And I'm mad for her. Like, I'm like I'm so sorry she went through this. This is fucking shameful. This is absolutely shameful. And now she's just fired? For what? Oh, your contract ended. You know, we don't feel like renewing. Why? Why? She's but we fired all know because why. she did her job. Exactly. We all know why. We all know why. Like, she was literally, like, I can't say, like, hounded, but they were like, like, explain this tweet. Explain this. What for? Like, she gave her opinion about her experience. What's wrong with that? Well, apparently, it gets you fired. It gets you fired. Hmm. Pretty much. Hmm. Okay. And the messed up part is her role was, even though she was a writer, she was a producer, which meant staff writer. Mm -hmm. So everybody came to her with their problems. And yep. she with their prob she was the voice for them. So when she's the voice for herself, you're gonna fire her? Exactly. Yeah. And the big problem is teach my ass. <laughs> and the big yeah. problem, the big mm -hmm. problem, it's like and I'll shut up after this. It's like you can tell the the quality of the writing based on who's writing it. And you can tell that it's always somebody of color who writes the good episodes. So watch Superman and Lois go down in value after this, this first season. Because I hear that it's doing great, like most CW shows do when they first start. But then watch it go down the, go, go down the drain like everything else. Watch. That's why I don't even bother with new shit from CW anymore, because of this crap. Sorry, Darren, what do you, how do you, what's, what's your, what are your two cents? To long-time listeners, I... 
understand you think you know what's coming for those who have been with us for the last 49 episodes. Thank you. <laughs> but you're not gonna get a you're not gonna get a DC CW WB rant from me because I've been saying this every time something came up long before even Mr. Fisher started his campaign that there is something wrong behind the scenes at Warner Brothers, specifically CW, but our next story is going to tell you about the entire company. There is a race issue, specifically with Black people. Cool. You give a couple of Black people some jobs as actors. Great. You do some quotas for writers and even some lip service to producers. But when they speak their opinion, when they voice their opinion, when they do the job that they have worked for, trained for their entire lives to do, and you subjugate them to this type of treatment, you letting us know by your actions how you truly feel about them. Candace Patton, the entire cast of Black Lightning. Now, as we can see we, with the writing in Superman and Lois, when, again, when she points out that Lois' name is in the title of the show and you have nothing for the character to do except be a mother, that's a problem. Especially since the very character of Lois Lane, for all of my comic book readers out there, has always been the epitome of modern woman. Yes, I can do everything I want <laughs> and do it well and look good doing it. Exactly. That's Lois Lane. Well, now anyway, but back in the day, she used to be the person to mess around with those things, even though nobody knew she was doing it. Lois had her own comic book. The reporter without powers had her own comic book. Now, was it some, it was some stuff in there? Yeah, but still, that in and of itself is a move that a lot of that have been lost in the comic book industry with strong female leads. So now that you, in 2021, or 2020 they were producing and getting ready, you going to take that away? After you canceled your, your female-led Supergirl show and replaced it with this one. Tell me how that makes sense, CW. Please, for your female audience, which keeps keeping y'all afloat, how does that make sense? And as for <laughs> our dear friend, Mr. Fisher, this is what we mean by when we say, hey, it's cool to point stuff out, but then what do you want to do about it? Are you just pointing it out? Do you want to move on with your life? Or are you point it out because you want to make a change? Because there obviously needs to be a big change at Warner Brothers because it seems that people are getting but no power and their voices are being silenced. What are we gonna do about it? We gonna stop? We gonna stop supporting them? Are we just gonna call it out? Or are our actors, are our writers, are our producers, are they going to get together and be like, okay, cool. This is how y'all wanna play? We gonna come over here so we can make a space where no black actor or writer or producer has to go back to y'all. When are we y'all gonna take that next step? When are we gonna take that next step? Because I'm just gonna go straight into the next story. There is definitely a problem at Warner Brothers because they also announced this week that they have canceled Ava DuVernay's New Gods and James Wan's Aquaman spinoff, The Trench. <laughs> Two creators of colors just had their movies canceled. Paulina, give us some more details about what's going on with these Warner Brothers cancellations. Okay, so basically Warner Brothers is like, no, we're not going to move forward with these two movies because they're claiming that, you know, they already have so much on their plates with all these movies coming out for the next year, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's possible that they can find it. A- <laughs> it's possible that they can find a-, a second life in the future. You know, but, you know, they have a packed schedule for, like, I think the next, not even the year, like, the next several years or something like that. And it's like, huh? What? You know, the studio claims that it, you know, didn't want to tie up the creators while they were, while they waited in limbo. 
And it's like, but you're not in limbo when it takes several years to write and produce and film a story. It takes several years. Tell them. Several years. Tell them. So how is it that now you're canceling something that's not even in production yet? Like, I don't even know if it's done, if they're done, being done written. You know, because I know that a lot of scripts have been shelved. This, th- you know, okay. Let me take a, take it from a neutral, ah, from a neutral stance, from a, you know, non-biased, like this happens. This does happen in Hollywood, no matter the person, no matter the writer, no matter the producer. It happens. Sometimes you have a great project, but something happens. There's no room for it, whatever. It's shelved for the next ho- however long. Okay. It happens. However, this doesn't, this doesn't sound right. This particular issue. No, because conveniently enough, interestingly enough, it's two people of color. Okay. A black film producer writer, director, and an Asian producer, writer, director. How convenient, how interesting that those two are the product, uh, projects that were canceled. When you can, when they can still go on and work on it. Is there a limited budget? Or y'all are just thinking that they're expendable? This just makes no sense at all. Now, I appreciate how, you know, Mr. Verne is very grace graceful about it. And she's like, well, you know, it's it's been great working on this. Thank you for having me, for providing me this opportunity. Okay, cool. But at the same time, it's like, come on. Seriously, what what what's the point? This takes time to put together, and yet... And yet, oh no, we can't. Why not? Too much to do. Putting stuff on the screen versus making stuff for the screen are two very different processes. What's the missing Thanks. link here? What is the missing link here? Thanks. So, like Mervet said, bullshit. Bullshit. Hell, heck, I don't even know what the new gods are. However, once I saw Duvernay's name on it, I was like, okay. Cool. I'll, I'll check it out. I'll see what it's about. Now it's canceled for what? Mmm. Something ain't right. It smells strongly of fish. And... Mar- yeah. Yeah. It's a black woman is working on it. Mm. Mm. And an Asian man is working Mar- on it. Mm. Yeah. Well, the black woman got dragged for it more than an Asian man. They were calling it, it's gonna be woke It's gonna be too woke. Mm. Even though... What? The name of the book, written by the king himself, Jack Kirby, was literally about that type of stuff. It was about enlightenment, being smarter, being better human beings, basically being woke. So, huh? They're new gods. They are the new gods out of the old and new god. I mean, this title. Uh, Anyway, Marvette, would you like to elaborate more on your feelings about the cancellation of these two movies by these two creators? Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. I was looking forward to seeing actually who the fuck the new gods are and what they do and what they're about. And I wanted to see how she was going to write it. How she going to present it to the screen. Because she's a fucking artist. Fuck y'all. Y'all I, lost a lot with her. I feel like Jack Kirby's rolling in his grave. <laughs> For real. <laughs> this is garbage. Because how many times have we talked about this on the podcast? Where people want to do comic book movies and you'll have writers, producers say, hey, don't read the comic book. Ava DuVernay read The New God. I like comic books and sometimes this stuff hard for me to read. Jack Kirby wrote some crazy stuff. But she sat and read Jack Kirby's books. She went to DC and said, hey, send me the books over, please. Let me get some codes. Let me download digital. Let me read this stuff. She yeah. went through and she's like, yo, let me, I, I'm interested with this project. And that matters a lot. Yeah. Because you have some writers who Never touched a fucking comic book, but they're out here writing this oh shit like God, they yes. and you can lived tell. it. You can exactly. Tell. You can tell. And too. somebody yeah. that actually did their fucking homework and Ooh. was enjoying what they were doing, then you're gonna shelf that shit. Right. Snyder. Snyder. Yeah. And hey, hold on, let's highlight this about mm-hmm. James Wan. Let's be honest. Uh, for, for any criticism I have about Aquaman, it was still a good movie. Mm-hmm. It still kept my attention. I still liked the movie. So even if you want to do a spinoff that didn't have Aquaman in it, but if it expanded on that universe, I was down. Right. I was down. Even though I thought it was a weird move. And yes, if you go back and um, listen to the podcast, I say it was a weird move for Warner Brothers not to just say Aquaman 2, but to give James Wan this spinoff movie. But I'm still, I'm still going to go see it. 
James Wan got me to sit down and enjoy a DC movie. Because as y'all hmm, seem to forget, yes, Wonder Woman was cool. That ending was... But Aquaman was a billion plus. Aquaman yeah. did what it was supposed to do. That's James Wan. We waited a long time for that damn movie. <laughs> Bruh, that's James Wan. So no matter what he wanted to do, no matter what project he was doing, if it was in your universe, what made sense for it to cancel it? Like, like he said, putting the movies on your streaming service in theaters is different from producing. Didn't The Rock just come out with a whole bunch of stuff talking about the movie that they are making right now? Yep. The movie that's been sitting in limbo for 14 years? Yep. But y'all want to cancel these? The Trench has only been around for like three. Yeah, when did Aquaman come out? Yeah, three years ago? Three. New Gods was announced a couple of years, uh, a year or so after Aquaman came out. So the New Gods in working for two years. 14 years we've been waiting on Black Adam. You don't think we would have waited for this? Exactly. But that's what I'm saying. There's a problem with Warner Brothers when it comes to people of color in actual positions of power, except for Walter Hamada, the person that seems to be cultivating this racist ethic. Everybody else seems to just get tossed under the bus. But I would like to point out, yes, in Avery DuVernay's response, her and Tom King, her co-writer on the project, really did the most diplomatic thing, saying, yes, we really look forward to it and hope that the door remains open. But how many things have that people of color have been behind that Warner Brothers has continually canceled and we haven't heard anything about it? Y'all keep forget how many black writers and directors on the Flash movie Hmm. Now they talking about we getting the Flash, but when? Only thing we know about the Flash movie right now is Ezra Miller's in it. That's it. Hmm. And Ray Fisher's out of it. Oh, sorry. That's it. Hmm. That's all we know about that movie. But we still waiting around on that one. But how many black writers and directors and producers y'all fire off of that? Makes no sense. There is a problem at Warner Media. DC ran over. Do you guys have anything else you'd like to add to about the interview for James Wan's situation? I was looking forward to learning more about Dark Side or Dark Side. There you go. Sorry. The way they wrote it. <laughs> right. Hey, hey. I was hey. like, wait a minute. Hey, wait, Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby can write a squiggly line in his art, okay? You calm down. All right, my bad, Jack. Right. Take it back. <laughs> All, right. All right. But yeah, um, P, anything else you'd like to say? <sighs> Look, all, I, all I'm going to keep reiterating is we got to build our own, y'all. Like, I really wish Black creators and, you know, other creators of color would just actually get up from these studios and just walk out and, and just build their own, period. Just, just let them, them. Just let them fall. Let let these studios fall because they 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 playing too much. Mm. They're playing too much, far too much. Yeah. And this this is the internet, has proven, the internet has proven that we don't that you don't need these studios to make it. Like, no, come on, man, you don't. Like, you don't. You really don't. Really don't. But yeah, well, yeah. So DC ran over. Negative times are passing. We are gonna get back on some real nice positive vibes here with the Afrofuturism. Um, Ernie, the black. The Blur Without Fear has an incredible YouTube channel. Go check them out. Subscribe. Tell them the initiative sent you. And he dropped a video about Califa and the Timeless Centuries, a motion comic. Marvette, give us some details about Califa. Califa and the Timeless Centuries, the comic motion. Oh, the complete comic motion. My bad. I'm off of it today. Only for $1.99. <laughs> nice. You could print me, you could pay for this beautiful art piece. Califa and the Timeless Series is a story of Califa, a powerful Nubian Amazon queen. A powerful Nubian Amazon queen. Say it one more time, please. A powerful Nubian Amazon queen. Yeah, I like that. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> who joins forces with Sir Maureen the Black Knight, Mowgli, Madam Butterfly, Silcrest the Sorceress. William Tell and Don Henry. 
It's a female descendant of John Henry to defend the innocent against the malevolent forces of Lumeria, a mysterious realm where time, space, science, and magic defy the laws of nature. Mm, sounds like some Lovecraft shit. Like it? I like it. I like it. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Uh, creator, writer, producer, Keith L. Underwood, directed by Rachman Dunbar and Chris, I'm sorry, Fayella. I yep. apologize. Y'all don't know. That was very nice. Fayella. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> it's never seen artwork, never seen animation, exclusive, never seen behind the scene interviews. And only for a dollar ninety-nine, y'all. I'm about to click and buy it myself and go mm. see this. <laughs> artwork looks amazing. And supposedly that's where California got their name from. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go check this out. I was sold a Nubian Amazon queen. That was it for me. <laughs> but the black art is beautiful. As usual, black women kicking ass. Black women defending. Black women building. Black women, you rock. Fact, fact. Pete. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the most comic Khalifa and the time and the centuries? I don't have much else to say. Mervet pretty much said it all. I was just drawn by the, by the picture. By the, like, <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as I saw like the mm. screenshot, like the just I saw the picture of the cover. I'm like, let me check this out. Let me let me get on it because whoa, she's giving me more than Storm vibes. All right, I'm loving it. I need to see more of Storm too. Mm -hmm. But I just. I'm gonna put my money on this too. I miss Storm. I do too. Well, you guys have really done a great job talking about this, and I just have to say, support. Yeah. Um, support. And support. Support. And oh well, well you just finished it yeah, exactly. Support. Yeah, support. Down ninety nine. Down ninety nine. Down ninety nine. The initiative individually, down ninety nine. Six dollars we've given them of our money. I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> Throw it in there. Don't lay Exactly. For real. Don't lay now. Like, because usually I'll be like, hey, we'll buy it for the company, for the three of us to use. Nah, each of us individually. Don't lay now. Go support. Yep. Go support. Period. Um, so, we're going to round off with one more story today. And it's, well, honestly, it wasn't a surprise. It was just like, <laughs> why did it take y'all so long to figure this out? <laughs> San Diego, San Diego Comic Con announced that their Thanksgiving event for this year be in a little trouble um p give us the details what's going on with sdcc okay so a couple weeks ago or last month actually san diego comic-con announced that they were not doing that they were canceling uh again for at least the summer their comic uh, comic-con okay cool we get it pandemic so they decided to go on ahead with a more like a smaller more intimate comic-con in the fall now before they didn't say when mm -hmm. they just said maybe around september october just the fall now they clarified that mm -hmm. it was going to be in november during thanksgiving weekend and why what what made them think that was a smart idea because nobody's gonna go to a comic book convention versus seeing their family huh like is I this would have anyway. what is it oh you well I mean, I, I would have chosen. The, the I mean, you know what? Been, you know what? That's fair. That's You're fair. an exception. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. Not everybody, you know. But I mean, is it like set up like, oh, if you happen to be in town, check this out. Like, what's what's going on with that? Like, what what are we doing? Why? <laughs> like, Comic Con. Yeah. Why? And, and of course, people are upset over that because it's like, why Thanksgiving weekend of all times? Like, That's why they're upset, not even because of the pandemic. No, this is and this is the thing that got me. This is the thing that got me right. So they they didn't have a date at first. They didn't have a date, but then they're like, "Oh no, let's do it on Thanksgiving weekend." Because you want to know why? Because idiots have been traveling during the pandemic. They're like, hey, right. if they're gonna travel for yep. the holiday, for holidays, let's see, we give them to come. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I was thinking so, about that. So they out here. Right. So they they like, yo, they already out here, but let's do it. But then they just saw the numbers from spring break. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they like, wait a minute. Even if people just going out for 
to see their parents and stuff. If something happened, they're going to blame it on us because they're going to say, but I also went to Comic-Con. Yep. They, yep. they don't want that smoke. It's pretty they much don't a super want spreader that event. smoke. It's a super spreader event. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they don't want that smoke. No. Because I, we, I, and we talked about this a few episodes ago. I love the idea of a smaller online Comic-Con because the last one was so bloated that even stuff that people wanted to see and they had to cancel, yeah. they didn't have any numbers. Mm-hmm. So doing a smaller three-day one in the summer, cool, perfect. They might be a little worried because, again, people are still going outside. But it's like, no, people will stay in. They'll get it with just offer exclusives. You know, got to give, got to give them the, got to give them the merch. Yeah. But I think that the people saw what was going on with Spring Break. They like, we cannot even be nowhere near this type of bad publicity. And they're like, yeah, it's over. We're not doing it. Sorry, guys. I don't think we're going to do this little November thingy or fall event. And, and I'm sorry to say, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. It's, <laughs> I understand people, you want to go outside. I've seen the number for Godzilla King Kong. You want to go outside. I saw the video of some spring break. You want to go outside. You want to be around people. But no, I just miss outside. Yeah, 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 but <laughs> the people it, I just right. miss, you miss being outside. But it yeah. shouldn't, yeah, but it shouldn't cost you your health. Because again, yeah. I don't, I don't like talking about medical stuff on this show. But again, I, I'm a geek. I would like to look at science and stuff. And they are talking about the learn the long term effects on this pandemic on the human population, yeah. medical wise, and what we don't, we just don't know yet. We just don't know. And let's be honest, we're, we, we're in America. Uh, we ain't got no universal health care. <laughs> That's your out of, out of your pocket money. It's not worth it. It's mm-hmm. not. And I'm I'm glad a lot of companies are just like, hey, we want to see y'all. We want your money. But, man, not that much. Not that much. Yeah. <laughs> Lots will cost more. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so... Good on, good on SDCC. Um, just, just good on them. Um, do we have any more thoughts about the possible, a uh, hopeful cancellation of the SDC convention? He said this should stick to small virtual ones for now. Mm-hmm. And once outside is ready to be open, whenever that is, they can plan something small too. They don't have to start crazy as they usually do. Start with some again see how it goes the lawsuits are right great make it a little bigger next time go on from there just stop fucking with people we have, we have enough on our shit already and keep entertaining us online facts, facts. some of us are actually home dude right. dude these online events look the online events last year except for Sunday at comic-con were actually goddamn fantastic so <laughs> do better sdcc Paulina, how do you feel about the possible cancellation of the fall event? I, I mean, just just be smart about it, please, because people will be dumb about it. That's all I gotta say, honestly. Just why? Mm-hmm. There just you go. Why? Yeah, there you go. That's the perfect. That's the perfect way to do it. That's the perfect way to say it right there. Hey, you be smart about it, because people will be dumb about it. Perfect, P. Mm. Uh, mm. <laughs> perfect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you well, that. on that note, hold on, right? Exactly. On the end of that note, on that end of that perfect note, that's all I have on our show notes today. When we get to the end of our show notes, what we like to do is go around and ask anything in Afrofuturism or general geekdom that we saw that we just didn't have time to add to the notes. And let's see, Marvette, let's start with you. It gave in and I watched Zack Snyder's Justice League. Mm. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed everything about it. <laughs> and I paused the movie so many times that it came from four hours to five, almost six hours. Wow. Good Lord. I, I kept going back <laughs> to the movies and relating scenes. And nice. I was, just, I was having a moment with myself, y'all. Nice. Mm, mm. Watch it. It's worth those four hours. I know nice. it's, it's dragging, but I gave myself intermission time. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta miss some snacks and get right back down. Shoot. 
Because, girl, my legs weren't hurting. I was sitting down, laying down, doing all kind of yoga poses just to watch the movie. <laughs> oh, man. We might have, we might have to do an in-depth review of the Zack Snyder Justice League now, man. Oh, I oh, boy. enjoyed oh, it. I'm looking forward oh, to that. Boy. Man, oh, That's man, hysterical. oh, man. That's why I was looking forward to seeing more of Dark Side. Because mm-hmm. a little scene in the beginning, and I was just like, dang it, I want more. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, guys, don't forget this today. Concrete Cowboy came out. Make sure you check it out on Netflix. Oh, snap. I forgot that's about important. that. Yep, yep. Today, today, Concrete today. Yep, 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 yep. And awesome. if you haven't seen Godzilla vs. Kong, do so. Did that you see it yet? Yes. That was twice. <laughs> nice. I nice. applied the first time myself, and Noah decided he wants to see it again. No. So it was uh, nice. nice. I enjoyed it. It's not bad. You'll enjoy nice. it. Good, good. Is it just monster right, smashing? Is it just monster smashing? Watch it. No, watch no, no. it. Just, 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 watch is it. it. Is it humans being dumb and better attention on on the monsters? Just give there's me that. Mon- there's monster smash. There's humans being humans. There's scientists being scientists. Mm. And there's greedy scientists. Oh, so Godzilla. All right. Right. Okay. White man. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Godzilla. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yep, Classic. Yep, yep. Classic. Shit. There you go. Okay, cool, there cool, you cool. go. Thank you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's all I need to right. know. <laughs> yeah. P, what have you experienced in the realm of Afrofuturism or just general geekdom? Okay, so I have like a stumbling upon news just literally right now, but then I remembered yesterday was April Fool's, so I'm not going to re- reiterate any of this because I don't trust it. What I did do the past week or weekend was finally, finally gave myself time to get into um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Black Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh-uh. Black Falcon and Winter Soldier. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes, yes. And I love it. Oh my god, this thing was just... Nice. This Yay! Is, this thing is so in my corner. Like, this, this is my shit. This is my shit. And I love it. And I was so... I was so happy. Look, I'm gonna spoil it for those who didn't even watch it, because I don't care. They brought in Isaiah Bradley. <laughs> Isaiah Bradley. And I was like, what? Before they even, like, oh. Let me shut up. Let me calm down real quick. Because <laughs> I knew about him. <laughs> like, I read, you I read his comments. All your hate comments. Straight, it, just make sure you put Pauly. I'm just. I'm she gonna... fangirling over here. <laughs> I don't care. No, because honestly, no, I was thinking about it. But again, because I'm in school, it's like I'm trying to figure out where I can find the time to do this. Either just do a regular review on each episode or do a live tweeting event. I don't know what y'all think about that. I don't know if okay. you guys would like to do that because it's been a while since I live tweeted anything since Castlevania, actually. Season three? Is it season three? Yes, season three. Whenever you feel, whenever you feel like it. Right. No, go no. ahead and watch because I watch it at the oddest of times. I'm right. nobody's Me too. To watch Me stuff. too. Like, <laughs> right. So no, that's true. You, if you, right. If you got the energy, if you think if you think we up, text the group, and if we in, we in. Or if not, go ahead and do it anyway. Right. This is all love. No, oh, I get it. I know. I'm be just like, like, well, do I have the it'd time? Be like, <laughs> it'd be thing. like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. over here when I'm like, click. Right. Or, or, or 1 p.m. in the middle of treatment. I'm just like, oh, crap. I didn't watch it yet. And I'll sit and watch it. So, right. and so odd mm-hmm. times. Odd right. times. That is true. That is true. Everything's like available whenever. So either way, though, right. it's it's so good. <laughs> Dialogue, the action, the, mm-hmm. the great value Captain America uh in his black sidekick <laughs> i don't even remember his name oh, his black sidekick oh, black, yeah. black, black sidekick okay Battle that's what he's star. gonna be referred to as you know we got black falcon we got black sidekick we good so <laughs> no black battle star black... that was the stupidest thing i've heard <laughs> like, hold on but it's but it's comic book accurate <laughs> i know but it's just like, like the way he said it I'm like, Battle Star. Uh, Battle Star. Call me Battle Star. I'm like, shut up, like, yeah, I wanted to smack this? him. I wanted to smack him so hard when he said that. I'm like, I love it. Okay, I love it. Up, I love it. I love it. And I started it was WandaVision. So good. I started WandaVision. Nice. I love okay. I'm still in the first episode. I love it okay. because I grew up on sitcoms like that. So I get it. I mm-hmm. love the mood. And it's like, it's just, it just sets up. It's a great setup. I, I yeah. appreciate these shows. I like them. Like I said, I really love Black Falcon, Winter Soldier, or. What is it? Win- Winter Wolf. So, I forgot what he called himself. White Wolf. White, white, white Wolf. wolf. <laughs> white Wolf. Black Falcon and White Wolf. I'm gonna call him that from now on. Yes. Black Falcon and White Wolf. Yes. Mm-hmm. Black Falcon and White Wolf. Well, exactly. 
So in that that banter, like between Sam and the kid, I beautiful. I just I love that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I like their characterizations. I love, you know, the therapist was great. Mm-hmm. She was awesome. So it's it's a good show. I appreciate it. I know the new episode just dropped today. Um. So I'm great okay. episode. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully I'll be able to you know get my ish together this week. Uh, I'm just sometime. so mad waiting a whole week for an episode. I like that though. Like I think no. they started. I'm like, I just give me all did, of it. Right, but but I appreciate it because I think <laughs> I don't know which streaming service started doing that. I think it was Hulu with Castle Rock. Amazon. No, did Castle Rock do it first? Oh no, you might be right. Castle Rock might have been yeah. first. You're wait, right. Wait, when did the boys come out? Did they come out before Castle Rock or after Castle Rock? No, I think Castle Rock came out first. Really? Because uh, well, the yeah. boys was episodic too, right? From the first yeah. season. Uh huh. Okay. So he, the boys he was either, once a week too. Right, because he was either the boys or Castle Rock. Yeah, Castle Rock dropped their stuff once a week, like mm-hmm. regular uh, cable. And I'm just like, this is I like that. I prefer that because it gets me thinking about the episode instead of just binging and then forgetting half of the crap that happened because it's so much. Like some mm-hmm. people prefer that. That's fine. Me, it's refreshing. Get back to that old formula. I like that. <laughs> I'm nah, those people. F that old formula because that old formula give people a whole week to make up BS that's never going to happen in the show. True. And I'm sick of listening to fan theories. Like, sh- shop and just watch. All right? Just, just that's true. Watch this and no, go read the comic book. See, I just block God, people. I don't even talk to anybody about that stuff anymore. I learned that mm. it's the hard way being being in fandom. I, it's annoying. Nah. Like, mm. I just, I like the yeah. old formula because it just, it helps me think about mm. what I watched. And I can rewatch I, it without feeling like I'm falling behind. I th- I can think while I watch. I can think after and think before. But a week gives too many other people time to think, and they don't need to just no, watch the damn show. True, uh, that's, true. <laughs> that's true. But like I also watched. I'm, I'm up to date on Falcon and Winter Soldier, um, episode four. Nice, fantastic. Uh, just just good solid Marvel movies. Like I said, people people have gotten spoiled and just forgot that there was a time where you would go to a movie. And you weren't sure if it was going to be good. Right. Yes, Marvel has a formula, but it's good. It works. It works. Don't be mad because it works. Just enjoy it. Right. Just enjoy it. And this was another really good episode. Um, We only got six episodes. This was episode four. And some people might think nothing happened. But again, pay attention. Watch the show and stuff happens. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything. Um, I also was able to catch up on uh, episode four of Invincible, the Amazon Prime animated um, series based off of the Robert Kirkman comic book. <sighs> I love the comic book. I am loving, loving this show. The things that they've changed, the things they moved ahead, the things they moved around, done so well. And they're sh- even showing stuff that happened that that that's in the comic book, but you don't see it in the comic book. They're showing it in in the animation, and uh, it's just one of those things I just enjoy. Um, Maybe I'll review it. I don't know. I just I just enjoy it. It's it's one of those things I just sit back and I experience it. I don't worry about writing down notes or talking about unless somebody asks me about it. Then I'm telling them to watch it or read the comic book. Because again, Amazon Prime on Commonsology, if you have an account. I believe the first 100 issues are for free right now. So go check them out. Go, go, go just go, go read. Just go read and watch. Support. What, what was that word again? Support. I believe the word was support. Support. Just support. You can support anything you want to, but support. Um, and that's that's it for me. Those are the only other things I've been dealing with outside of the what we did for the notes. So with that being said, um, I'd like to thank everybody for listening. I'd like to thank you for spending time with us. And once again, if you can, while you're here on YouTube at Afro underscore AI, hit the like, um, leave a comment, and subscribe. And while you're at it, hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. Well, we'll see you on episode 50. Peace.